Okay, so hi, this is what's up. Um, obviously, I haven't made a video uh, since October. Um, I'm not sure, I think the mid October, and I apologize. Uh, I had to go without internet for uh, about a month, month and a half, and now I've moved. It's almost Christmas, and I moved uh, last Monday, as a matter of fact. So, about six days ago, I moved into a new house. And I have a new space to paint in, and that's what we're seeing right here, is my new little painting studio. Once again, it's a garage, but this one has actually more light than the last uh, garage I was working in. As you can, you can probably hear wind. I've got the windows open. Um, I have blinds I can put all the way up to get more and more lighting in here. I've got the garage door I can open all the way, but I'm trying to prevent like a windstorm from coming in. So a little bit has changed. Behind me, you'll see another part of that change. I've been doing landscapes for Chasing Gallery. I'm sorry, once again, I didn't make any videos about it because uh, stuff was going on. But I have uh, six or seven new, new smaller uh, 24 by 24 and 36 by 36 inch paintings up at Chasing Gallery in Sarasota. I'm working on this one. I bought two, more, two new canvases, which you can see right there. So I'm going to start a couple more, and I'll tell you what I've been doing with them. They're not just landscapes like here's a painting of a palm tree, although I think they're kind of bordering on that. I've been playing with um, a lot of dark, dark and light. Um, I love, take, I love uh, doing landscapes of Sarasota at night. I find it really interesting, uh, a little bit cal uh, calmer, and I love the way uh, Sarasota at night comes up with these simple shapes and it's also more reminiscent of a Sarasota that was whereas now it's a lot of traffic and you probably hear some of it um, I'm closer to Route 41 which is the main highway I'm about a mile close I'm about a mile away from it if that and so a lot a lot of traffic a lot of shopping and stuff going on and it's, to me, it's confusing and it's um, overwhelming. Uh, it's hard to um, find a way to do these landscapes that isn't anything more than more noise. So I've been walking around at night and taking pictures of homes and, and, and um, areas that I see water, with water, uh, water that reflects light, but areas with homes uh, that are well lit and that show off the actual landscape without showing the landscape. During the daytime, it's all greens, and this tree is here, and that tree is there. I just really love doing the outline of the trees, getting some of the darks in, but also doing what I did for a long time, which was show the canvas, uh, the gesso on the canvas. So we've got the gesso, the flatness of the gesso, with some aerosol and then some oil paint over the top so that when you look at it you see one image but when you turn once again you're seeing dry and flat but you're also seeing it's another truck shiny and and um, more of a gloss so I'm hoping that intellectually that gives the viewer something more to think about than this is a tree this is a house it's more about what I like to do which is talking about painting without talking about painting. It's all about the act of painting and what paint can do or not do on a surface. So that's what I've been working on. Once again, Chasing Gallery has 24 by 24 and 36 by 36 inch. One of them's incredibly psychedelic and crazy. I'm not sure what I was thinking, but um, I just go with it. I go with what the paint says. I'm really excited about the light in this room. I'm excited about this kind of the smaller space. I like, I I always really appreciate a big space with high high ceilings. As you can see, I don't have a high high ceiling in here, but it's also framing my thought process to work smaller. Uh, it's something my galleries have been asking for for a long time and also asking for thing, uh, subjects that are more universal. And I really fight that because I want to paint um, what my heart tells me to paint and what, you know, what, I, what I am driven by. But I think I found another angle where it 
fulfills both obligations of the gallery, the one of the galleries in size and content, and also fulfills my need to make the painting, make the illustration of the painting more complex, make the project more complex and interesting to me. I did that before with figure work and, and portrait work, splitting the canvases, you know, making them two, three, four instead of one made it more of an adventure for me and more, more interesting um, to deal with instead of just like one big canvas, which it just, it doesn't carry enough weight for me. Uh, visually it doesn't carry, um, it doesn't convey uh, anything more than this is a portrait of a person or a couple of people, it just doesn't. So behind me you also see a project I was working on, uh, uh, Christy Applebaum and uh, Bobby Peck. Uh, you can kind of see them out, of, they're a little out of shot, but that's a commission I've been working on. And I'm looking forward to starting it here. I can see it better, I can see the colors better, and maybe think a little bit differently too about the portraits. Because uh, they were becoming a little too, this is a figure, this is a painting. Um, so I haven't given up completely on portraits and figurative work, but I'm fulfilling an obligation and an avenue uh, that the galleries have given me. Please paint smaller, please do something that's more universal so we can help you, please. So I'm doing that. Um, as I've talked about many, many times, I'm not good at jumping through hoops anymore. They're exhausting and they're boring to me. But I really, I think I found it and it's made painting exciting again. It's also had me thinking about stripping down the way I was painting. I'm actually considering scrapping these two and buying new canvases and starting again so that I can show more of the gesso, show more of uh, the um, dryness and add texture using pencil and things. But we'll see. I haven't covered enough of it in oil yet where I'm totally, totally, totally committed to one old-fashioned, overdone way of painting. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, I haven't given up on figure work. I haven't given up on portrait work. Um, I also have a, a new drawing station that I'll show in another video so I can work on my book, uh, Stories from Scooter Town. I'm really enjoying this house. It's clean, it's open. I'm not sharing it with another crazy roommate who's going to destroy it and everything. It's just me, the cat and dog. We can do whatever we like and I love it. It's, it brought me back to feeling like me um, as opposed to someone who's like, Oh, you know, oh my God, what's going to happen now? Um, I do have some very sad news, and I almost didn't make a video today because um, someone I've painted several times now and hoped to paint more and more is leaving us. Um, uh, drag artist Yolandi, uh, Yolandi Fisher boy named Dexter, who I've talked about in many videos, and made a video about actually, um, has been fighting cancer for quite a while. Uh, and this, this kid is right now in uh, home hospice care. I can say this out loud because the people that are caring for him just started to post online. Um, There are not enough words to convey how extraordinary this kid is. He, I call him, I've been calling him for the past week since I found out hospice was coming in and his uh, organs were shutting down. That uh, I've been telling people he's, he's a loud mouth. Uh, he's a loud mouth. And yes, he piss he's pissed a lot of people off over uh, the years, but he is such an extraordinary, extraordinarily strong and decent human being. He is at the core of drag in Providence, Rhode Island, gender fluidity. Um, uh, he, his work in social activism in fighting white supremacy and just fighting for people who don't have a voice or are the underdog, it, 
in the most courageous and outrageous and out there ways you could possibly imagine. I am sad for me. I am sad for Providence. I am sad for everyone. Um, Yolandi has has touched. When uh, the Pulse shooting happened, within hours, Dexter or Yolandi slash Yolandi had a vigil put together. And as soon as I saw it up, I was there. I was there because my friend, who has allowed me to paint and illustrate him over the past four years, asked that we come and hold a candle and a vigil for these innocent people that were murdered in a place he knew and loved. He lost friends, or sorry, they lost friends. And as it turned out, I ended up meeting a number of people whom had lost friends at Pulse. All of them came together. All of them were able to grieve together because of Yolande. I met one young girl who had no one there, and I just happened to be standing next to her, and she started to cry. And I had the opportunity to put my arm around her and just hold audience to her grief. At the end of it, we were standing there hugging. I was being nothing other than that silent auntie uncle who can hold audience, but uh, at the end of it, Dex walked up and started talking to her. He, uh, Yolandi was Miss Gay, or, uh, Miss Gay Rhode Island in 2018. I did portraits. Yolandi has been honored by the governor of Rhode Island for their AIDS work, their work in AIDS awareness. Truly an extraordinary person, and when they are gone, there will be a very big void in the world because there aren't enough of us who hold the power that a figure like Yolandi does. Young Wendy will never see this. But I just need to say, you will not be forgotten, ever. You have given me more. In the past three years than anyone will ever know. You helped to give me new direction, new insight, new clarity. You helped to give me honesty in my work. You helped me to put more heart into my figures and portrait work than anyone. I will think of you every day, Dex. And I hope people try and find your profiles online and, and look at your images and your forward-thinking drag and just try and learn what an extraordinary figure you are, are right now and more soon and try to emulate you. We need more Dexters in the world. We need more Yolandes with a big outrageousness, this determination and a willingness
to open up worlds that otherwise would be go unseen. Or actually break down doors to worlds that would otherwise be go unseen. I love you. I love you with all my heart. But in the next video, um, we'll do some painting, okay? But today, right now, I just want to remember my friend. I just want to remember my brave, extraordinary friend.